that's the time. The November 25th, 2014 regular meeting of the Mentor Exempted Village Board of Education is called to order. This meeting is being held in accordance with section 3313.15 of the Ohio Revised Code. Mr. Wilson, will you please call the roll? Ms. Gisling. Present. Ms. Miller. Here. Mr. Shaw. Here. Mr. Tuttle. Here. Mrs. Briner. Here. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> I would like to welcome everyone to the November 25th, 2014 regular meeting of the Mentor Exempted Village Board of Education. Prior to this evening, each board member has received for their review and consideration the agenda and materials associated with each agenda item for the board's approval via the district's paperless Board of Education Agenda System board docs. The public can access the agenda through the school district's website. The agenda is available through the district's website for public viewing the Sunday prior to the board meeting. Board members have the opportunity to call the superintendent and chief financial officer for information concerning agenda items and to request, if needed, additional information. There are two places on the agenda when the board entertains comments from the community. The first hearing of the public is dedicated to those who wish to address the board on agenda items only. The second hearing of the public is dedicated to those who wish to address the board on any subject, whether it is an item on the agenda or another issue. When addressing the board, please state your name. Comments are limited to three minutes. Please address questions to the president. This meeting is being televised on a delayed basis and will be shown on Time Warner Cable channel 96.96 in Menor and channel 96.22 in Menor on the Lake. The meeting can also be found on your YouTube channel, Cardinal TV Menor, Ohio. Please place your mobile telephones on silent mode during the meeting. At this time, I would like to have a moment of silence for Mrs. Jennifer Cribbs and Mrs. Peggy Such, who recently passed away. Peggy worked for Menor Schools for 14 years, most recently as a classroom assistant at Memorial Middle School, working with special needs students. Thank you. Uh, we'll have approval of the minutes. Can we do these as a group, Mr. Wilson? Yes. Okay, we have October 14th, 2014 regular meeting, October 22nd, 2014 special meeting, and November 6th, 2014 special meeting. So moved. Second. Please call the roll. Mr. Tuttle? Yes. Mr. Shaw? Yes. Ms. Gisling? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Mrs. Briner? Yes. And now we'll entertain hearing of the public on agenda items only. Thank you. Su Superintendent's report and recommendations, Mr. Miller. Thank you. Good evening, Madam President and members of the board. I have the following recommendations listed under the consent agenda and recommend approval of items 5A1 through 5A5. So moved. Second. Please call the roll. Ms. Gisling? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Mr. Shaw? Yes. Mr. Tuttle? Yes. Mrs. Briner? Yes. Thank you. Madam President and members of the board, we are always excited when our student athletes excel in their respective sports. Tonight is no exception and we get to recognize state qualifiers in girls tennis, cross country, and also a roller skating skater of the year. Mr. Wade, Mr. Casella, and Mr. Shaw will make the presentations. Mrs. President, members of the board, Mr. W Mr. Miller, and Mr. Wilson, it's with my pleasure to introduce a member of our girls' tennis team, Miss Natalie Weaver. If Natalie would join us up here on the stage. Natalie was our number one singles player all four years here at Menor High. She has been our team captain and M MVP 
uh, four times, I believe, over, our, over her career here at Mentor High School. She was the sectional champ in 2012, sectional runner-up in 2013, and finally made it to the peak and qualified for the state tournament this past season. She's a member of our National Honor Society and has a 3.87 GPA in the classroom. She recently, in a ceremony here in this, in this room, signed a letter of intent to attend Siena University uh, to continue her tennis and, and academic career. So it's my pleasure to introduce Natalie Weaver. It's also my pleasure to introduce members of our state qualifying boys and girls cross country teams. I'd ask our head coach, Mr. Bill Dennison, to join us up here, please. This season was another successful season for the Cards. Our girls team was district champs for the third straight year. They finished third at the regional meet, which qualified them for the state meet. At the state meet, they finished 12th overall in the state of Ohio. This team includes six academic All-Ohio members on it. Our boys team, they were Northeast Ohio Conference champions. They were district champions for the seventh year in a row and regional champions this past year, something we haven't done in a while. They finished eighth overall in the state of Ohio. Again, a fantastic job by them on the course. They also include three academic All-Ohioans on the team. So as I call your name, members of our cross-country team, if you'd come up and receive a certificate of recognition. Our girls team, Elizabeth Gilreath. Not here. Catherine Magro. Margaret Magro. Avery McGeary. Samantha Meyer. Madeline Mulhall, Kinsey Robinson, Carolyn Skleeter, and our boys team consisted of Colin Blakemore, Joseph Brickman, Chris Canala, Wade Elmore, Maverick Hunsinger, Dominic Odo, Joe Palakowski, and Brandon Stolt. Again, another great season by our cross-country teams. Well done again. Before you go on, let me just say one thing. Yeah, one more. Oh, one more runner? No, I'm sorry. one more. Well, running. Every time I pass the crews, the ladies and the gentlemen running, it looks like you do it, no pain. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Madam President, members of the board, Mr. Miller and Mr. Wilson, it is my pleasure to recognize artistic roller skater and freshman Joy Mason tonight. Joy, if you'd come join us up front, please. Joy was presented with the prestigious 2014 a Skater of the Year Award at the Ohio Figure, figure Royal Roller Skating Banquet. This banquet is held each November to recognize past and present skating champions. Ohio skating coaches vote to select the recipient of this coveted award. The winner is chosen based on medals earned and dedication to the sport of competitive roller skating. Level A is the highest level, and it is for the elite skaters who are extremely proficient at their sport. 
At the award ceremony, Joy also received a trophy in her recognition for regional and national accomplishments for 2014. At the five-state regional competition in Shelby Township, Michigan, Joy won four gold medals. At nationals in Lincoln, Nebraska, she earned one gold medal and one bronze medal. This is Joy's third year as a national champion. Congratulations, Joy. Thank you all and congratulations again. At this point, Madam President, members of the board, I've asked Mr. Lynch to present his monthly straight A update. Good evening, members of the board. Mr. Wilson, Mr. Miller, I appreciate the opportunity to keep you updated on the progress of our straight A grant as our technology is firing up here. Um, it has been another busy month um, as we continue to move forward with all of our objectives for the straight A grant. So I'd like to begin with our professional development center. Um, this past month, as you know, on November 6th, you have accepted the bid of capstone construction. We have he held our first two construction meetings over the last two weeks and submittals are already starting to come in on that and soon this is going to uh, we'll start seeing the reality of this with tomorrow morning fencing will be going up around the construction zone to secure it and so we've laid a plan out to um, be able to work traffic as that area over there still stays open throughout um, construction so we are going to have a groundbreaking next Thursday December 4th we hope that uh, the members of the board, if you are available, we'd love to have you present at that groundbreaking. Uh, we will have our band playing and uh, just a s couple of short talks about the Professional Development Center. So we are excited at the progress that the PD Center is occurring. Next, I'd like to update you on the progress of our Learning Center. You will see that our Learning Center has, since our last meeting, been officially named. Um, the hub is going to be the name of our new le learning center, as we believe it is going to be the center of technology and innovation at our high school. And so we believe that everything that we are going to be doing at the high school is going to stem from the hub. We have had steady progress over the last four weeks. Um, we had an update, a meeting today with our White House construction company. Uh, the lights are currently going in, even since this picture was taken uh, last Friday, um, the ceiling, uh, ceiling tiles are start, will start going in at the end, uh, beginning of next week. The ceiling grid is already located in there. Lights are going in as well. All drywall will be completed in the hub um, by the end of the weekend. Um, we are off of school on tomorrow, Friday, and Saturday and Sunday but uh, the contractors and the subcontractors are going to be working throughout so that we can stay on schedule. So all of the drywall will be finished at the end of the week. Most of the painting is completed. Um, lights, ceiling tiles, those will be going in next week with carpeting and tile on the floor following soon thereafter. Uh, also on the exterior, if you've had an opportunity to take a trip over there, uh, not all the way finished, but getting close, our, our window replacement that went along with um, the uh, renovation of the media center. Um, and, and they look fantastic. Um, I had a report from a teacher this past Monday who was walking behind two girls as they were looking out the window and they were talking to each other and the one girl said, oh wow, look at the new shiny windows in the learning center. So that was some good positive feedback from a student. I wanted to just show you and, um, the two floors of the hub, the first floor and the second floor, um, with an emphasis on the furniture. This is um, the final draft of all of the furniture that is going to be going in um, both of these locations. Um, the thing that I really want to emphasize, um, three kind of words that I think stick out in my mind when we talk about the media center. The first one is being vibrant. Um, you know, we want, we want our students walking into 
this space and feel energized just by walking into it. The second one is, is the energy. Um, you know, we want kids excited about the opportunity to come into the space and learn. And the third one, which I think the, the, the furniture really promotes, is collaboration. Um, all of these spaces, as you look around, everywhere you look, there's groups of students to be able to sit and be able to collaborate and work together. Um, you know, the traditional learning center is one of sometimes quiet and more reserved. Um, we want this to be a place where kids can come in, work together, collaborate, and learn together. So not only do we have spaces out in the open, but on the second floor we also have, when they're working on presentations together, we have small breakout rooms where they'll be able to sit and meet, talk together, and figure out and problem solve together. So we are very excited about the hub. I have the December 13th date on the bottom there. Um, and that is the date, it's a Saturday, um, that all of the furniture for the hub will be delivered and, and put into either the first floor or the second floor. And then a company, Ohio Desk, will be using the next two weeks to assemble all of the furniture, um, ready and set to go for January 5th, beginning of our second semester. Classrooms, I wanted to also update you on the progress of our classrooms with regards to the, the grant. As you re recall, we are renovating 60 classrooms in the high school. This is actually, I'm gonna show you two representations of two classrooms, which are our pilot classrooms. Um, and these are the actual setups of the classrooms. This first classroom should be set and ready to go by December 15th. The second pilot classroom should be set and ready to go by the middle of January. Um, we are using these two classrooms to kind of lay the foundation and figure out what are the obstacles that we're going to face um, as we get in and start renovating this classroom. Um, as you can see, um, this classroom, for instance, um, has three different seating areas. This back area, which is a cafe style, a little bit higher stool area where students can sit. This middle area, which is a little bit lower traditional um, um, level seating, and then we have this soft seating over here. Um, all of these um, are movable on wheels, the chairs on wheels, the tables on wheels, so groups can quickly move about to form a new position or form a new group to work with. And that's, that flexibility is certainly one thing that we see as important in our new classrooms at Mentor High School. The second classroom, you'll see some similarities, um, but you'll also see some differences. Um, um, this has a little bit more soft seating. Both of these classrooms, by the way, are ELA classrooms um, in the high school. Um, but you can see a little bit more soft seating in here, but also still some of the traditional um, regular height style seating as well. Um, and again, this room can quickly be moved to form small groups and so the, the students can collaborate and work together. The one thing you do not see on this, for instance, on this classroom, there's going to be also three 42-inch TVs located in each one of these corners. As our students uh, have each one of their, next year they'll each have their own device, their Mac, uh, MacBook Air that um, will be going into the classrooms. It will allow them to quickly connect up through an Apple TV so as the students are working on something and they want to share with the rest of the group, they'll be able to quickly be able to airplay that information up to that TV to share with their group or even with the rest of the class. And so we like the idea, we're really working towards the idea of students being able to um, use their new devices in ways to help each other learn. Next area I want to uh, discuss is professional development. Um, you know, the first three areas, the PD center, the learning center, and the classrooms, those are the physical spaces that go along with this grant. But such a significant part of this grant goes along with the professional development of our teaching staff. So this past uh, day after our last board meeting on October 15th, we had our first uh, true professional development afternoon with our high school staff. And so it was a two hour block of time where we were able to utilize our district coaches as well as uh, some of our teachers in our high school who have some great technological skills um, to work with our high school staff. And our afternoon on October 15th was spent around Google. Um, I like this next slide because it just promotes the idea of what we're trying to do is uh, here is Ms. Siskin, one of our high school teachers, referencing on Twitter um, the professional development that she had with another one of our teachers, Ms. Rodiger, um, and, and appreciative of the professional development that she offered her on Google templates. And so it's this type of professional development and this small step-by-step -step approach that we're taking to try to move our teaching staff along. Uh, as I mentioned, we did 
make the final decision on the MacBook Air. I informed you of that at our last October um, board meeting. Um, devices were delivered to teachers on November 5th, and uh, we had a lot of excitement around that, which I think you can see even on this next slide. I love Ms. Wolski's expression up there. She is really excited to have her MacBook Air in front of her. Um, and I love Ms. Dickerson's welcoming my new MacBook Air. Christmas in October. So, you know, it's that type of excitement that we have seen a lot around this grant. Um, and you can see the way we passed them out is we had all 170 of the devices laying out on the floor to greet them um, on our first professional development day with those on November 5th. Um, I'd also like to give you a, a brief uh, just overview of the professional development that's going to be occurring for the staff. Uh, starting in December, we are going to have an initial 20 teachers trained in Schoology, which is going to be our learning management system. They are going to take that information and help to lead all other teaching staff members in January. We have six days in January. Each staff member will work a day on Schoology and be led by their teaching staff as well as myself and work with the Kirtland teachers as well. Um, Following that, in the months of January, February, March, and May, we are also going to be having a uh, two-hour session each month on Web 2.0 tools. Um, working with Mr. Wade, we were able to pull this schedule together so that we limit the amount of te time teachers are being pulled out of the classroom, and instead we're using some time after um, school, two hours after school, in place of the staff meetings to kind of move mm -hmm. the professional development along uh, with regards to this grant. We are also going to have in May and June um, uh, more of an academy like for the teachers. We have identified 27 teachers uh, who are moving a little bit quicker along this blended learning path. And we, we've, we've used this analogy of, of stairs. And we want everybody kind of moving up the stairs. Some, some of our teachers are going to run, sprint, or just jog up the stairs. Others are going to walk up the stairs. And some, it's OK if they crawl up the stairs, but we just want to keep on moving up those stairs. And so the teachers who are running and jogging up those stairs, we are moving them along a little bit further. And for those teachers, we're going to be offering uh, um, an academy in June, um, a three to four day academy that really kind of pushes the, the, their learning and blended learning a little bit further along. So that's kind of an overview of the professional development. And I'd, I'd like to end with, I think the reason why we are doing this, which are these folks sitting here behind us and all of the other 2,700 students um, at the high school. That's really, I think, where all of the adults that are involved with this, our passion comes from these guys, and we want them to be excited each and every day coming to school and want to love being there. And so I think Ian Meadows said it best on his tweet on October 24th when Ms. Richard shared with him uh, her classroom setup, which is, can't wait for Ms. Richard's class, class renovation. It'll be so cool. I love the direction our school is going. And so us, that, that motivates me. I think that motivates all of the adults working on this grant. And we're excited to push forward. And in two weeks, I look forward to giving you another update of the progress of the Straight A grant. I'd be happy to take any questions that you have at this point. The Hi. smart board's in the classroom, so they're going to remain? or. You know, the, TV. the smart boards are not, we're making that as an individual decision based on what the teacher needs. Um, you know, the, the smart board was originally um, brought to the classroom as a, in a single computer classroom when, you know, students didn't mm -hmm. have devices because it was a great opportunity mm -hmm. to display what was on one computer. Um, but some teachers have invested so much of their content into the smart boards that if a teacher says, I really think I need that smart board, we are certainly not going to take it away. We don't want to take away any tools that they feel like they need to continue to move forward. So it's kind of on an individual basis that we're working on that. What the teacher needs is what we will do. What are you going to do with the smart boards you're not going to use? Um, well, you know, with some of the smart boards in our district, they've started to fail. Um, we've had some problems with smart boards with, um, there is a glue, that, an adhesive that actually con contains the front of the smart board and the, the mm -hmm. outside layer of the smart board where there's an air pocket. And we've had some difficulty with some of our smart boards where over time that starts to pull away. Some of our smart boards in our district are eight to nine years old. The majority of them fall in that five to seven year range. Um, so what we'll be doing is probably using the ones that may come down, 60 classrooms if we take down maybe 30 of them, 
to take care of other issues that might be around the district with regards to those smart boards. Um, those issues arise here and there, and then if we end up having a surplus of it, we'll have to figure out as a district what decision we want to make with those. I, I don't anticipate a large sur uh, surplus of it, but those are our initial plans. Okay, thank you. Sure. Mrs. Breiner and I had the, the treat of touring the hub, and I love the name. Having spent 20 years as a professional librarian, I can only say that looking at the 1962 vision yep. that the architects had for our central learning commons in the, in the high school, their vision was as modern and visionary as this is five decades later. And I'm so excited to see the way the responsiveness of the technology and the way that space is organized that absolutely is student-centered mm -hmm. and will, I think, be a treat to work in, to learn in, and bravo to everybody concerned with, you know, from the building staff, our custodial folks who cleared that space out so efficiently this summer, and Mrs. Sterner, who got all of her stuff out and weeded and ready to put back, so that I am so impressed that you pulled this together yeah. on schedule. And, and I'd also <laughs> like to recognize the teaching staff of Mentor High School, who have been phenomenal in times of there is construction going on, it is a construction zone. At times it has been loud, but they have been phenomenal throughout the process and accommodating and you know, with, with some of the extra noise and activity that's been going around. So the administration and, and the teaching staff have, and the custodial staff at Mentor High School have been awesome. It's wonderful. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Lynch. Um, we are going to, at this time, take a five-minute recess. Anyone that would like to leave is welcome to do so. Anyone that would like to stay for the remaining meeting is welcome to stay. Thank you. We're going to reconvene the meeting. Madam President, members of the board, before I get into um, a report on the local report card and a little bit about the uh, summit I was at last week, I do want to uh, just publicly acknowledge two groups um, and thank a lot of people in this room, uh, our Sparkles group and our art students, so both Mrs. Ambrose and Mrs. Petrino took um, their kids down, our kids down, uh, to Capitol Conference, and a few of you were there. So um, it was just great to see how excited the kids were, how excited the parents were, um, just to be in, in, in that environment. I was at uh, Rice yesterday, Mrs. Petrino said her kids that went down, um, art students are still talking about how it was one of their best days in school ever. Um, because A, they were out of school, um, but, but B, they did like uh, presenting to uh, school board members and other school administrators across the state. And I um, heard so many compliments um, from the Sparkle parents, too, that um, just that they were included and, and uh, all the stops that were pulled. So obviously want to thank um, you all for your support with those groups going down, but also for the administrative team um, that helped uh, get that going. So heard lots of positives from uh, people from uh, OSBA who were very touched uh, by both groups and how well they presented and carried themselves. So um, even though I'm going to talk about the report card, things like that make, I think, mentor special. And those are the things that uh, aren't on a report card or aren't reported out. And um, those are the things that I think we need to, to keep intact and remember uh, to keep the main thing the main thing. Um, with that, I do want to give, because the data has come out and it's been verified, talk about some of the um, high-level um, things on our, on our school district report card. And I'm going to frame it in this, this sense. Um, the changes that are coming from the state, you're going to see and are reflected here. Um, but the changes coming from the state are happening on a daily basis. And um, we're getting notification about changes in testing, changes in park, changes, potential changes in Common Core every single day. So we're in that lame duck session with our state legislators. Things are changing. Um, this is a reflection of previous changes. Um, but um, I think what we're seeing here, a year from now, I'm going to be talking about something else. And I can't tell you what that something else is yet. Um, but I think there are going to be some 
uh, alterations and changes. Um, if we were under old rules, so to speak, and when you walk into this building, you still see our Excellent with Distinction banner. If we were under the same guidelines um, today as we were then, we would still be Excellent with Distinction. The state changed to a dashboard report card, um, and there's some things that have changed. So I'm going to talk about those a little bit. You can see, maybe you can see, um, on our report card, I'm going to talk about, this is the, the full dashboard, but I'm going to talk about our performance index, our indicators met, our gap closing. You can see there would be a concern there. And then we're working to address some of our lower points um, or areas of concern. We've already started to address, we've been working on those already, but there's, those are some of our subgroups. And I'll get to that in just a second. Uh, our performance index was a 103.4, which is consistent um, for the past couple of years. It is a little bit higher, um, I believe, than last year. We are above and value added, which is a good measure of how uh, we are doing in our classrooms. And also, we met 22 out of 24 indicators. And I'm going to talk about that in just a second. These are all the indicators. Um, on this portion of the report card. So you can see, obviously, the green check is something you want to be at. The red X, not so much. Uh, but we are close to being 24 out of 24. Here's um, something I alluded to just before. The cutoff used to be 75% and above for passing. Uh, the state raised that this year for 80% and above. So if we were still under the 75, um, the checks, uh, the red Xs would not be there. They would all be green. So. It's not an excuse, it's just a, just a reality of where we're at. So those are the areas um, that we are tested on currently, always subject to change. One of the things we look at at Mentor and, and many schools like us, high performing suburban um, districts, look at how do they compare uh, with similar districts. So we are the blue silo, uh, similar districts like Mentor with the same demographics um, are red and then the state averages in yellow so you can see what we have up here is third grade reading and math so reading is on the left math is on the right so that's third fourth and fifth grade and you can see uh, we exceed far exceed the state averages and exceed on this slide uh, similar districts for sixth seventh and eighth grade uh, we are again exceeding in most areas we're a little bit lower in seventh grade math but uh, there are uh, varying reasons for that but by and large still successful there 10th grade ogt same same story uh, we are exceeding similar districts and well outpacing the state average um, and again the benchmark was raised to 80 percent which was something new. Performance index, that's what I mentioned before, 103.4. Um, the highest you can get is a 120. Uh, I know of one district that did that um, and, and no others. Um, but it takes into account how our kids score on their test in the different bands. So we have advanced and accelerated and proficient. Um, and th those are the three top rates. District progress talking about value added. So you see a little bit of red in here in math, and that's a concern and something we've been working on as a district. Uh, but what district progress looks at is when a student comes in, whether or not they score at the 80th percentile or not, you want to see a year's growth. So a student may only score at a 50%, um, but maybe the year before they were at a 35%. So they made growth. So we do get credit for that when you're looking at this type of measure. Gap closing. So this is sort of um, the nexus of where we need to focus our attention. We've already been talking and working with our teachers, our principals, and the administrative team has been spearheading the efforts. So what we have here are our subcategories and the, the groups um, that are not making that benchmark right now. Um, that we are working on would be our economically disadvantaged people, so free and reduced lunch populations, um, also our African American students, our limited English students, and students with disabilities. Those categories and subgroups are, are um, uh, dis distinctive in that um, we have enough numbers to trigger uh, gap closing deficiencies um, in this report. So these are the things that we're working on with those subgroups. So we're targeting 
um, those populations of our students to get some more improvement um, to show. Third grade reading guarantee, I mentioned before more than once here about um, we were, after you took out all the kids that were on IEPs and you took at, out students um, that was, English was a second language, we were down to one who didn't pass and who was retained. So he had some gaps in his education where he was homeschooled and out of school setting uh, in and out. So um, it was in his best interest to be retained. I'm not a fan of retention, especially at the third grade level, um, but it is something um, that our teachers, I feel, do a really good job with. You can see up here, uh, based on last year, and again, this was a change, this was something new. We had to report out how many kindergartners, first graders, second graders, and third graders were not on track. So for example, at the top kindergarten, we had 41 students that were not on track. So those are the, those are the populations that we are targeting and that we are focusing on. This is a slide that shows how our students in the fall, third grade, so this is third grade, last fall, fall of 13 versus fall 2014 of how they're scoring. So this is two different groups of students. So the blue silo is third graders last year. The maroon or red silo is third graders this year. So those are our students that just took technically an end of third grade year test um, just last month. And this is how they performed. And you can compare one year to uh, the previous year. And then this is overall how our students are doing right now at our elementary levels that we're working on with the curriculum department, with our building principals, and our teachers are putting plans into place. So that's sort of the overview of where we're at with the local report card and what we're working on and what our focus is and has been. Um, I want to be the best school district in the state of Ohio, um, if not farther out. Um, but I will tell you there are other things to measure us by than just our test scores, even though this is very important. I'm proud of the other things that we do as well. Um, these are some of the items um, that the state wants us to look at for um, college and career readiness that we are making headway on. Um, you saw an email, I believe, that I forwarded on to you from Mr. Wade about some of the changes coming out of the high school with more AP offerings uh, and more testing, um, not in a bad way, but testing for SAT, ACT uh, options for our kids. So we are, I think, ahead of the curve for most districts, but I will tell you we have some areas that, that we need to work on and we're doing so. Questions, comments, concerns? One of the things that came up uh, while we were at the conference in Columbus was the five of eight discussion. And as uh, a mentor, parent, grandparent, former teacher, and now board, I'm so pleased and proud that we've made a robust program for our elementary students and that related arts and all of those auxiliary services that enrich and protect the well-being of the children in our care. Could you talk a little bit about that? I don't know if everybody sure. knows all that, Scuttlebutt. Sure, and I, I appreciate you bringing that up because I think that's important and kind of ties into this and what, what I mentioned before. So the five of eight that was going out, that was the, the term that they were using. So there are certain categories that the state says you need to have service providers for or teachers for. So PE, um, music, art, nurses, counselors, and I'm not gonna be able to name them all off. There's one that I don't think any district does. But per thousand students, you need five of those um, categories or five people in place. So there was no discussion um, with my organization or organizations I'm affiliated with um, that had brought that up that that was going to be a concern or that was going to be a consideration for state legislators. So I have a problem with um, lack of transparency or lack of discussion or talking about why we would make a change. And um, I don't anticipate ever and mentor um, hopefully saying, you know, we're not going to have X program in math or, I'm sorry, in music or in art because um, we don't have to. Um, I mean, you, talk, you look at the kids that we recognize tonight and how many of them 
have academic options now um, that, and that are academic All-Americans now. And so I want to be able to provide as many options as we can for our kids. So, um, and, and that's something Mr. Wade and his team at the high school have talked about too. That's why we're doing some of the blended, some of the online options um, for our kids. So um, we have a lot to be proud of, and I don't want to get, I don't want to be in a situation where we're start starting to talk about getting rid of any of the arts programs or things like that. My superintendent, state superintendent organization, came out in favor of making that change, and I called down there and I asked, you know, what, where did this come from, and why are we, why are you, um, and me by default supporting that type of change and. Um, you know, they, they explained it as they're driving more towards the middle. They represent so many districts. And I'm like, nobody called, nobody put anything out before there was discussion on this. Um, and, and they get that, but I think they're driving more towards the middle. And I think we're more towards the top, um, if that makes sense. Um, they also explained it as, as just giving district the option of what they're going to have. And they used the example of school nurses. So we're way above in terms of school nursing um, for our students and the amount of students we have and buildings we have and right now you have to have so many school nurses in place or one of the um, eight and they're talking about how the legislation could change where school districts could negotiate agreements with local hospitals and health care providers instead of having school nurses. Now that's something that I think is not a bad idea and that is, it merits discussion. I can see where that could work in certain communities, certain towns and then I said, my comment to the organization was, then frame it that way instead of saying, you're just going to give districts the leverage to eliminate programs. I think that's a slippery slope to go down because there are a lot of school districts who do the bare minimum now. And if something like that goes into place, how far does the bare minimum sink? Sorry, more than you probably wanted to oh, know. Not at all. Uh, especially when we look at the, the kinds of scholarships that our seniors earn those skills, those advanced skills, only grow over time. And so I'm, I'm just proud of the kind of program that has been nurtured in Mentor for decades. And I'm really delighted that we're all on the same page as far yeah, as keeping that going. And, and um, you know, the, the parent support for those programs is huge, too. And we see that, you know, all the time. Um, so it doesn't mean we don't have things that we can shore up and improve on, but um, I'm glad to be working at a district where we value all those things. Anything else till I move on? Okay, thank you. Um, I do want to just mention briefly the Future Ready Superintendent Summit that I was fortunate enough to attend last week um, that I know that a couple of you um, had talked to me about. I will, I don't have slides, but um, I will give you one, Mr. Dudziak, be careful. I will give you um, one um, highlight, the main highlight. <laughs> and look, no, no one's focused on me, are they? Uh, the one highlight of my trip to D.C. and to, this is part of the show, it's okay, um, and to Washington was um, I, got to, I got to be in a place at, at the White House where I got to talk about mentor students and mentor teachers, and how cool was that? So that was sort of the highlight. And so while it was titled the Future Ready Superintendent Summit, I want to give you an example of mentor schools being future ready. <laughs> Madam President, members of the board, Mr. Miller, Mr. Wilson, our goal is always to provide the best possible education for all of our students. We currently have this device on loan to determine its effectiveness situations where students could not be in the classroom for one reason or another. Mrs. Watson requested an evaluation of this robot as a solution for a student with a disability that requires him to leave the classroom frequently. We're also speaking with a student who is currently in California receiving specialized medical treatment, but who would like to not only participate in class, but spend social time with her friends at lunch and after school. While the primary role of a school is in facilitating the transfer of academic knowledge, supporting our students' social and emotional well-being is also critical. Technologies like this are providing us with new ways to meet all of the needs of all of our students. Thank you. Pretty cool. So Pretty cool. I, I don't know if you, you caught that, but we were demoing this for a student at the high school who has a, I won't get into specifics because it would identify uh, the student, but when he can't be 
I didn't just <laughs> gave the sex away. Um, he can't be in the classroom. This can be, and he's in another room and can still see what's going on with the teacher and the students and still participate. So how cool is that? And, and just talking to the, to the teacher that was demoing this, he, he was just very excited that the student's going to be included more um, in his classroom than, than ever before. And then, uh, as Mr. Shore alluded to, there is a student of ours who's getting specific medical treatment out in California and, and losing significant amount of class time. So we're talking with that family about something like this in the classroom. So it's not going to replace the teacher or replace being at school, but it's a lot better than uh, missing everything or missing big chunks. So um, are, are we future ready? I, I don't know for sure, but I think we're getting, I think we're getting there. Um, back on the summit really quick. So the purpose um, of my attendance there was to, um, again, talk about mentor schools, mentor teachers, what we're doing, but also to, to, to sign the future ready pledge for, um, for the president and for school districts across the country. And we talked about uh, what does it mean to be future ready. So a lot of it has to deal with digital instruction, um, a lot about blended learning. Um, there's a book that just came out that Mr. Lynch picked up a copy of, that I have a copy of, that, that references mentors. So um, we're seeing a little bit of that. But it's amazing how excited our kids are. I wish they were still here that we could talk to them. But the buzz um, at the high school is just very favorable. Not that it was not before, but just to see the kids engaged and excited about what's going on. Not all of them. Not all of them are going to tell you that. But uh, there is an uptick, so to speak, in, in how our kids are behaving um, and what they're into. Uh, the other thing that we did in D.C. that um, assigned, aside from signing the digital pledge was there were two panels. And one was um, how do we support teaching and learning um, with digital curriculum. So we worked on that, and that's an ongoing topic that I'll be uh, working on with the group. Uh, we're going to do some Google Hangouts. And the other was how do we measure progress and the success of our students as we're entering this uh, bold new age. So that were the main points. And I just wanted to uh, mention that since uh, many of you are asking me about the trip. Any questions on that? Okay. Um, at this point, I'm going to go back. Thank you, Mr. Shore. So just just so you know, too, that device, the other kids at the high school, no, no one, you know, you'd think kids would bang into it, or they, they're really intrigued by it, too, and have conversations with the student whose who's face is on there. So um, at this point, uh, Madam President and members of the board, I'm recommending approval of the 15-16 school calendar and the 16-17 school year calendar. So moved. Second. Please call the roll. Mr. Tuttle? Yes. Ms. Jisling? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Mr. Shaw? Yes. Mrs. Briner? Yes. Thank you. That's the calendar that uh, we worked with with MCE, MTA, and um, is very similar uh, to the calendars that we've uh, been working under for the past two years, uh, first semester before Christmas, second semester after Christmas, and um, I think our parents appreciate also having a two-year calendar to plan. That seems to be working well. It, it has. So, I mean... Calendars are a funny thing because anytime you change something, it affects something else. But so far, so good. And we've uh, ironically seen a lot of other districts around us adopt similar calendars. Surprise. Um, Madam President, members of the board, this is the second reading of the following and new, new and revised policies. And I'm recommending approval of these policies. Are we required to read these three times? No, no just two? Just okay. Second. Thank you. Did we get a first and a second? Tom, uh, Tom did. Tom. Tom. Okay. Please call the roll. Mr. Tuttle? Yes. Mr. Shaw? Yes. Ms. Jisling? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Mrs. Briner? Yes. Thank you. I do have one change to the <coughs> agenda um, before I wrap up. I'm going to remove um, a name for consideration under supplementals uh, under supplementals uh, it's C under Ridge Middle School please at this point remove the name Mark Chacon from boys seventh grade basketball 
for Ridge. I'm sorry, Ridge, yes. Aside from that, it seems to be intact, and I'm recommending approval of agenda item C1 related to certified staff, C2 through C4, all related to human resource matters, and agenda item D related to administrative salary structure. So moved. Second. Please call the roll. Mr. Shaw? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Ms. Gisling? Yes. Mr. Tuttle? Yes. Mrs. Briner? Yes. This concludes my part of tonight's agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Board of Education report and recommendations. Any board business? None, we'll have the legislative report, Mr. Tuttle. I added some color to it. So I could know what's wow. Uh, <laughs> you can't see the color. <laughs> so the lame duck sessions, in process and actually there's a couple points I want to talk to and read if you all have that um, representative Andrew Brenner he recently introduced House Bill 629 which would limit the amount of state mandated testing the specific provisions in the bill include the following limits testing to no more than four hours per year per subject and grade level excluded from this requirement are the third grade reading requirements reading guarantee assessment, the national standardized assessment that measures college and career readiness, and end of course substitute examinations. I found, I found that interesting about the, the four hours because apparently it's gone beyond that. And uh, I've heard some teachers even not in our district tell me far too much, far too many hours. So is that in the right direction? Yes. You be the judge. <laughs> uh, also, it extends the availability of paper and pencil state assessments through the 2015-2016 school year. Could you imagine the schools who are not equipped? So they need that variance. And uh, it's, that's just a good point. Uh, also requires ODE to conduct a comprehensive survey of the capacity and readiness of each school district for online administration of the assessments. The survey is to include information regarding hardware, software, bandwidth, technical support, security requirements, training for teachers regarding the administration of assessments, and training for students regarding taking the assessments. So they're going to slow it down a little bit. And then there's House Bill 631 uh, to exclude evaluations conducted pursuant to the Ohio teacher evaluation system from the public records law and to exempt teachers participating in the Ohio teacher residency program from those evaluations. That's positive, that's in the right direction, it would seem to me. So, the other points you can read at your leisure and I wanted to cover those few. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to Chief Financial Officer's report and recommendations, Mr. Wilson. Thank you. It's recommended the financial statements for the month of October 2014 be accepted and placed on file for audit. So moved. Second. Please call the roll. Mr. Shaw? Yes. Ms. Gisling? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Mr. Tuttle? Yes. Mrs. Briner? Yes. It's recommended the Board of Education ratify the interim investments listed in Exhibit 7-B. So moved. Second. Please call the roll. Ms. Gisling? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Mr. Shaw? Yes. Mr. Tuttle? Yes. Mrs. Briner? Yes. It's recommended the Board of Education approve the interfund transfers listed in Exhibit 7-C. So moved. Second. Please call the roll. Mr. Shaw? Yes. Mr. Tuttle? Yes. Ms. Gisling? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Mrs. Briner? Yes. It's recommended the Board of Education approve the appropriation modifications listed in Exhibit 7-D. So moved. Second. Please call the roll. Ms. Gisling? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Mr. Shaw? Yes. Mr. Tuttle? Yes. Mrs. Briner? Yes. It's recommended the Board of Education approve the supplemental appropriations presented in Exhibit 7-E. So moved. Second. Please call the roll. Mr. Shaw? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. 
Ms. Gisling? Yes. Mr. Tuttle? Yes. Mrs. Briner? Yes. It's recommended the Board of Education authorize a payment of invoices presented in Exhibit 7-F. So moved. Second. Please call the roll. Mr. Tuttle? Yes. Ms. Gisling? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Mr. Shaw? Yes. Mrs. Briner? Yes. That completes my items this evening. Thank you. Any unfinished business? No? Any new business? No? We'll have hearing of the public on any items. No one? Thank you. We, I will entertain a motion to go into executive session. We'll be discussing current litigation. We don't expect any vote to take place. So moved. Second. Please call the roll. Mr. Tuttle? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Ms. Gisling? Yes. Mr. Shaw? Yes. Mrs. Briner? Yes.